Members, we have a quorum. A quorum is present in the assembly. We ask our guests and visitors in the rear of the chamber and in the gallery to please stand for the prayer. The day's prayer will be offered by our assembly chaplain, Father Constantine Papadimos. Father Papadimos. Thank you. Good morning. Let us pray. Lord, all the things that are difficult for us are easy for you. And yet, even with your power, you do not control everything since you have given us the great gift of free will. Lord, let the pure light of divine knowledge shine within us and open our spiritual eyes so that we may understand your divine words and, and your will. That way, you will be continually in our mind and in our heart. Amen. Thank you, Father. We ask our guests and visitors to remain standing and join us for the flag salute. Please join Assembly Member Gibson as he leads us in the pledge. Mr. Gibson. Thank you very much. Please join with me in saluting our flag. I pledge allegiance. You may be seated. Reading of the previous day's journal. Assembly Chamber of Sacramento, Thursday, July 16, 2015. The Assembly met at 9 a.m. The Honorable Kevin Mullen, Speaker Pro Tempore of the Assembly Presiding, Chief Clerk E. Dawson Wilson at the desk, Reading Clerk Kathleen M. Lewis reading. The roll was called. Assembly Member Campos moved move the quorum call. The Assembly Mr. Holden moves and Ms. Waldron seconds that the reading of the previous day's journal be dispensed with. Presentations of petitions, there are none. Introduction and reference of bills will be deferred. Reports of committees will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Messages from the governor, there are none. Messages from the Senate, there are none. Moving to motions and resolutions, the absences for the day for illness, Assembly Member Kansen Chu. Mr. Holden, you are recognized for your procedural motions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 118 and allow Speaker Atkins and Assembly Members Lackey and Dolly to have guests and photographers on the floor today. With that objection, that request is granted. Mr. Speaker, I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rule 45.5 and allow Assembly Members Joan Sawyer, Lackey, Patterson, and Salas to speak on adjourned memories today. With that objection, the request is granted. Mr. Speaker, Senate Bill 516 Fuller is at the Assembly desk. At the request of the author, I move to rescind the action whereby Senate Bill 516 was passed to the Senate on July 16, 2015, and returned and re to return the bill to third reading file. With that objection, such shall be the order. At the request of the author, please remove file. Item 88, Senate Bill 777, Laura to the inactive file. The clerk will note. On behalf of the author, I am giving a one-day notice of intent to remove the following bill from the inactive file. File item A14, Senate Bill 672, Hernandez. File item A19, Senate Bill 187, Hall. The clerk will also note. At the request of the author, please remove the following bills from consent calendar and order them to the inactive file. File item 136, Senate Bill 327, Hall. File item 137, Senate Bill 374, Hall. Clerk will note. At the request of the author, please remove the following bill from the consent calendar. File item 134, Senate Bill 49, Monning. File item 135, Senate Bill 708, Mendoza. The clerk will note. At the request of Ms. Waldron, please remove the following bills from the consent calendar. File item 130, Senate Bill 793, Wilk, and file item 133, Senate Bill 300, Mendoza. The clerk will again note. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.
Members, we have special guests with us today in the assembly. If we could have your attention, we have some introductions today. Mr. Lackey, you have a special guest with us today. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you, Chair. Members, I have the, uh, the great honor of uh, having my son, Justin, and his uh, good friend, Tyler, join me on the floor today. So if you could uh, please extend a welcome to them. Members, if we have your attention, we have additional guests with us today, members. Mr. Daly, you have a special guest with you today. Mr. Thank you, Mr. Daly. Speaker. I'd like to uh, introduce my son, Chase. He just turned 15, and I'm uh, really proud to say that he took after his mom in the looks and brains department. So here's Chase. Thank you. Members, additional guests with us today. Members. Ms. Brown, are you ready for your guest introduction? Ms. Brown, you are recognized from your desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm very proud to introduce two members of the San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department. Deputy, Sher um, Deputy Sheriff Ruben Perez is the Community Relations Deputy for San Bernardino County Sheriff's Department, and he's upstairs, if you'll wave, and the Community Relations Officer, Norm Nunez. He supervises Sheriff McMahon's Community Relations Unit, and I am so proud that they're here to say hello to us here on the floor. Thank you guys for coming. Members, if you will clear the center aisle, we have introductions of this year's fellows who participated in the Science and Technology Policy Fellowship Program. 
In 2009, legislation created the Science and Technology Policy Fellowship Program within the California Legislature. This program is sponsored by the California Council on Science and Technology, or CCST. CCST is a nonprofit, nonpartisan corporation established in 1988 by the legislature to provide science and technology expertise and advice. Each year since, the assembly has hosted up to five PhD or equivalent scientists and engineers who usually join us for the legislative season. While the fellowships have provided a unique professional development opportunity for these fellows, it has also resulted in some excellent staffing and a few new permanent staffers in the legislature. As I introduce each fellow, I ask for our guests and visitors to please hold your applause until all the introductions have been made. Please join me in recognizing Vivian Erickson in the Office of Assemblymember Christina Garcia. She received her PhD from Stanford University in molecular and cellular physiology, studying how the nervous system is set up in order to better understand disease. Also with us, Andrew Kozidar in the office of Assemblymember Daly. He received his PhD in biology from the University of Washington. Since graduation, he's conducted studies in the fields of conflict and big data. Next, Jane Mancy in the office of Assemblymember jo Jones Sawyer. She received her PhD in biomedical sciences from Meharry Medical College in Nashville, Tennessee, studying the link between chemicals in foods and colon cancer. Estevan Santana in the office of Assemblymember Benia. He received his PhD in microbiology studying infectious disease at the Ohio State University. And finally, Scott Sellers in the office of Assemblymember Quirk. He completed his PhD in civil engineering from UC Irvine, studying rainfall patterns using satellite data. Let us thank this year's science fellows for all of their hard work and their families and friends who have joined us up in the gallery and in the rear of the chamber. Members, we are moving to business on the daily file. Second reading, the clerk will read 
Assembly Bill 164, Senate Bill 9, 34, 36, 63, 219, 272, 287, 358, 379, 383, 439, 504, 530, 533, 539, 579, 597, 641, 655, 705, 716, 725, 762, 767, 170, 225, 231, 235, 271, 291, 303, 325, 342, 361, 407, 413, 416, 421, 436, 462, 474, 491, 494, 510, 532, 540, 542, 557, 560, 671, 675, 685, 697, 704, 711, 775, 795, 796, and Senate Bill 798. All bills will be deemed read and amendments deemed adopted. Members, we are now moving to file item 23. For the purpose of amendments, the clerk will read with amendments. Senate Bill 725 with amendments by Assemblymember O'Donnell. Mr. O'Donnell, you may open on the amendments. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. Amendments at the desk add an urgency clause and several co-authors to the bill. I ask for an aye vote on the amendments. With that objection, we may take a voice vote on the amendments. All those in favor say aye. I oppose, say nay, the ayes have it. Bill is out to print and back on file. Mr. Holden, you are recognized for your motions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I request unanimous consent to suspend Assembly Rules 63 and 69 to allow Assemblymember O'Donnell to take up Senate Bill 725 Hancock in mock-up form without reference to file for purposes of third reading. Ms. Waldron, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are without objection. Without objection, that request is granted. Members, we will now move to Senate Bill 725 by Assemblymember O'Donnell in mock-up form. The clerk will read. Senate Bill 725 by Senator Hancock, an act relating to pupil testing and declaring the urgency thereof to take effect immediately. Mr. O'Donnell, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. SB 725 has been amended and an urgency clause has been added to the bill to address the effects of the California high school exit exams recent suspension. We know that approximately 5,000 Californian students are in limbo because of the exam cancellation and we need to act now. Currently, students who have not passed the KC cannot receive a high school diploma. Students cannot take a test that does not exist. SP 725 ensures that these students, who have met all other high school graduation requirements, will receive their diplomas. This bill now simply states that the high school ex exam will not be required as a condition of receiving a diploma of graduation for a student completing grade 12 in 2015. Again, these students have met all other high school graduation requirements and some have been accepted to four U universities in, in the fall or are planning to head into the military or job training programs. Students who have worked so hard to meet high school graduation requirements should not be asked to put their dreams on hold. I believe these children are our future. They have worked hard, they have momentum, and we need to support them. I respectfully ask for an I vote. Thank you, Mr. O'Donnell. Ms. Olson, you are recognized from your desk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I, too, rise in support of SB 725, and I am pleased that we've come together on a clean bill to address this issue and help the students that are really caught in the middle of a horrible situation. And so I do urge support of this bill. Having said that, I must also express frustration that we are even at this point today. It is an absolute failure of the California Department of Education, of this legislature, that today's bill had to even come to fruition. Common Core, the implementation of Common Core, was not a surprise. This has been something we've been working on for years. We knew it was coming, and there is no logical reason we couldn't have been prepared with a new exit exam that was closely aligned with the Common Core curriculum. So that's one point. Second point, the students that are affected by this today, 
have only learned under the new Common Core system for this year when they were seniors in high school, which means that during their freshman, their sophomore, and their junior years, they learned under the standards developed in the early 90s that were aligned with the exit exam, and not only aligned with the exit exam, but aligned with the standards for eighth grade competency in English and ninth grade competency in math. So arguably, whether it was under the 90s standards or under the new Common Core standards, students today and even in the future should be able to pass the KC because it's testing basic competency, basic skills in English and math that students will continue to learn under Common Core curriculum. And so I urge this body to come back together quickly and to mandate that the California Department of Education, in an expeditious manner, develop a new system of assessing students before they can graduate from high school as to how they're doing. We owe that to California students. We owe that to California's economy to be able to measure student achievement and success. It is really getting tiring to see the state of California failing California students over and over and over again. It is unacceptable, and I call on every single one of us to work together to make sure we have a new assessment tool in place as early as next year so that we stop failing our students, we stop failing our universities, we stop failing our businesses that rely on qualified employees to compete in what is becoming an increasingly global marketplace. So again, I urge a yes vote on this bill. I'm pleased we have a clean bill to take care of this year's students, but let's not leave it at that, and let's certainly not leave it up to the Department of Education, who has no interest in ever bringing an assessment tool back again. Thank you. Mr. David Chu, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Colleagues, last week we learned about a bureaucratic decision that has unfairly placed thousands of high school students in an untenable situation. While our legislature has been in the process of deciding whether to phase out the exit exam, the California Department of Education prematurely decided to cancel this summer's administration of that exam. These students have been told that you can't graduate because you haven't taken an exam that's no longer being given, which is a bit of a Kafka-esque situation. I know some of these students, the vast majority of whom are first-generation immigrant students, many of whom overcame war, violence, poverty, and language barriers to graduate and to finish every other requirement, some of whom have failed previous exams by a handful of points. This bureaucratic decision has also impacted students planning to serve our country in the military, as well as those who required a diploma to qualify for jobs. None of these students should have their dreams deferred. I strongly support swift legislative action today to fix this situation as a principal co-author of this bill. I want to thank our legislative leadership for discussions involving our state superintendent, CSU, and school board officials for ensuring that no class of students should fall between the cracks of a bureaucratic mistake. Please vote yes to help our students keep their dreams alive. I urge and I vote. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Mr. Ting, you are recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I also rise in strong support of SB 725 by Senator Hancock and is also a principal author. This issue first got brought to light in the school district that Mr. Chu and I represent um, in San Francisco. And unfortunately, while our district has took extraordinary measures to grant diplomas for those students who actually were caught in this situation, we know thousands of other students really haven't been granted that same ability. So we really need to act today, act urgently, to make sure that students get to go to the college that they've already been admitted to, that they've already qualified for, that they've met every single requirement to do. And simply because of a bureaucratic snafu, they're not allowed to pursue their dreams. Uh, I just want to echo all the comments that have already been made and just urge that we vote today for SB 725 and send a strong message to all the students who are really relying on us for help. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tang. Mr. Thurman. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. I rise in support of SB 725, and I simply rise to urge that we take swift action on this bill. Um, I have been in touch with several superintendents of school districts in my assembly district area. Uh, like many of you, each of those districts has hundreds of students who are just simply put in limbo, and their families are feeling very anxious 
And even though some districts have taken the action to say we're going to move forward, many have said we are fearful if we move forward and do what is the right thing for our students, we will suffer sanctions and penalties and fees. Yes, there's much work that we need to do to talk about how we prepare our students for the future, but at this time, people are asking for swift action. They don't want to hear about wrangling. They don't want to hear about the reasons why we got here. They are asking our legislature for help to support our students and our workers of the future, and I urge everyone to support this measure. Thank you, Mr. Thurman. Mr. Allen. Question to the author. Without objection. Two questions. First is, uh, I read an article about this a couple of days ago. This was an issue that we could have seen long before a couple of days uh, prior to these students needing to enter college. Why are we doing a fix right now? Because students can't take a test that doesn't exist. Point well taken. Uh, second question I have is, why are we allowing these students to exit high school even though they fulfilled all their other requirements without the test that all the other students had to take before them, why are we not simply compelling the state, as is our right, to give them another test? Mr. O'Donnell, you may answer that in your close if you wish. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I respectfully ask for an aye vote. With that, the clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tally the vote. I 69 knows one on the urgency. I 69 knows one on the bill. Measure passes. SB 725 will be immediately transmitted to the Senate without objection. Moving to concurrence items, members file items 61 and 62 are passed and retained. Moving to file item 63, that is AB 673. The clerk will read. Assembly Bill 673 by Assembly Member Santiago and Act Relating to Crimes. Mr. Santiago, you may open. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, members, AB 673 is back for concurrence. Uh, Senate amendments are technical and clarifying. This bill has no opposition, is received bipartisan support. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you, Mr. Santiago. Seeing no discussion or debate on this item, clerk will open the roll. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote or desire to vote. All members vote who desire to vote. The clerk will close the roll, tie the vote. I 69. No zero Senate amendments are concurred in.